In this video, we're going to talk about how to classify amino acids and discuss some of the more important amino acids for the MCAT. Now, the first thing I want to do is reiterate the fact that amino acids are a very high yield topic for the MCAT. You need to know the one letter codes and the three letter codes for all 20 amino acids. In addition, you also need to know the PKAs of the side chains of the acidic and basic amino acids. Finally, you also need to be able to recognize the structure of the side chains of all 20 amino acids. Now, for this last part, I don't mean that you have to be able to draw the side chains from memory. Again, the MCAT is a multiple choice test. You never have to draw out any structures for any questions. However, there are a number of situations where the passage or a question will introduce the structure of an amino acid or peptide. And to answer the questions, you're going to have to be able to recognize the structures by side chain to determine which amino acids they are. Okay. So to start with classifications, the most important classification is classifying the amino acids as acidic, basic, polar, or non-polar. This is important for answering a lot of MCAT questions. Often you're looking at particular amino acids interacting with other particular amino acids. For instance, non-polar wants to interact with non-polar. We have two acidic amino acids, D and E, which are aspartic acid, which has a side chain PKA of 3.7, and glutamic acid, E, which has a side chain PKA of 4.2. Now, aspartic acid and glutamic acid refer to the versions of these amino acids where their side chains are protonated in the carboxylic acid form, as you can see in this diagram. Sometimes, you'll also hear the terms aspartate and glutamate, these are referring to the same amino acids, except, as you can see in this diagram, it refers to their deprotonated forms, where the carboxylic acid has been deprotonated to form the carboxylate. But again, these terms are referring to the same amino acids. There are three basic amino acids, histidine, lysine, and arginine. Histidine has a side chain PKAF6, Lysine has a side chain PKA of 10.7, and arginine has a side chain PKA of 12.1. In subsequent videos, we're going to focus more on these acidic and basic amino acids because their charge can change depending on the pH of the solution. And that's important for determining the function of proteins as well as how proteins fold, and also what directions will proteins move in machines like gel electrophoresis. Okay, for polar amino acids, which you can see in this diagram, we have serine, threonine, asparagine, glutamine, and tyrosine. All of these have a polar side chain. For non-polar amino acids, we have a lot, which again you can see in this diagram. We have alanine, glycine, isoleucine, leucine, proline, valine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, cysteine, and methionine. So again, this is something that you do need to have memorized for the MCAT, be able to classify each amino acid as acidic, basic, polar, or nonpolar. All right. Now, there are some additional classifications that you may see in the MCAT, which is essentially that this classification, acidic, basic, polar, nonpolar, doesn't fully describe the functions of all of these different amino acids. So we have two sulfur companion amino acids, cysteine and methionine. Both of their side chains contain a sulfur atom. We also have aromatic amino acids, so these side chains are aromatic, and aromatic are important for a lot of unique side chain interactions and interacting with different molecules. These include, and you can see in this diagram, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. Finally, we can classify amino acids if they have the hydroxyl group. So this includes serine, threonine, and tyrosine. Again, you can see in this diagram that they all have this OH functional group. This OH functional group is very important in biology because hydroxyl groups are targets for 
protein phosphorylation. So if you want to add a phosphate group onto a protein, it often happens on one of these amino acids with a hydroxyl group. Though sometimes it also happen with our acidic and basic amino acids that we have up here. Okay, so those are the different ways of classifying amino acids that you'll want to know from MCAT. Let's now focus more on a few key amino acids. So the first amino acid I want to talk about is glycine. Glycine is very unique because if you look at the structure of this amino acid, you notice that its side chain is a hydrogen atom. So because this alpha carbon is bound to two hydrogens, glycine is the only amino acid that is achiral. All of the other 19 amino acids are chiral molecules with both a D and L form. Now, in addition to being achiral, which is important for glycine and protein structure, it's very flexible, glycine is also important because it is a precursor to pyrrol. Pyrrol, you can see its structure on this diagram. This is a structure that you do need to have memorized for MCAT. The reason why pyrrol is important is because it is one of the components used to form porphyrins. And porphyrins are important because these structures can coordinate to cations, such as iron. And when they coordinate to iron, then they have special properties. And the most notable example is when porphyrin is coordinated to iron, you can form hemes. And hemes are an important component of hemoglobin, which can bind oxygen. Our next important amino acid is cysteine. Cysteine is important because it has a thiol functional group. The thiol functional group is this SH functional group. This is important because the thiol functional group can be oxidized to form disulfide bonds. So if you take a look at this diagram, you can see two cysteine residues, both with thiol groups, and they can be oxidized to form what we call a disulfide bond. Now, note that cysteine with EI is referring to the individual amino acid. When you have two cysteines forming a disulfide bond with each other, that dimer is called cysteine, except it's with an I instead of EI. So that's the dimer. Now, of course, if oxidation is required to form disulfide bonds, this means that if you want to break a disulfide bond, you need to reduce the bond. So a very common reducing agent that is used in biology is beta mercaptoethanol. So you might have heard of that term before in your biology or biochemistry courses. Our next important amino acid is proline. Proline is very unique because if you look at its side chain, you have this cyclic structure. The cyclic structure is important for a couple reasons. Number one, it means that this nitrogen, the amine, is not a primary amine, but a secondary amine. If you look at all of our other amino acids, they're all primary amines. The nitrogen is only bound to one carbon. The nitrogen in proline is a secondary amine because this nitrogen is bound to two carbons. Now, this ring structure of proline has important effects on the proline. The ring structure is very rigid, and as a result, when you're looking at protein secondary structure, like beta sheets as well as alpha helices, proline doesn't fit very well in those structures. So within a protein, you often find proline in between these secondary structures. So if you have two alpha helices and some loop connecting them, the proline is usually within that loop, and it's there because it's able to disrupt the secondary structures, the alpha helices and the beta sheets. Our last important amino acids we're going to discuss are phenylalanine as well as tyrosine. These are important biologically because Tyrosine is the precursor to the catecholamine neurotransmitters, and these include dopamine, norepinephrine, as well as epinephrine. And these three neurotransmitters are very important, and we're going to talk more about them in our biology videos. Now, while tyrosine, shown right here, is the precursor for those catecholamine neurotransmitters, it is made from phenylalanine. 
So technically, phenylalanine slash tyrosine are the precursors for those different neurotransmitters. Okay. So again, you're going to want to know how to classify amino acids for LEMCAT and keep in mind these more special amino acids for the exam.